Hey, welcome back to SourceFed. I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm William Hay. What happens to your body when you eat a slice of pepperoni pizza? I don't know. Pure f***ing ecstasy and bliss? Leave me alone. You know pizza is really bad for you, right? Yes, Will. But literally everything is bad for you. Consuming things in moderation, though? That's the key. You'll just develop heart disease more slowly. Yay, that means more birthdays. That's the ticket. Actually, a lot happens to your body after eating just one slice of the pizza de pepperoni. The Cosmopolitan locked down a real dietitian to explain using a nifty infographic. First, these findings were based off of your favorite cheap fast food pizza places like Pizza Pizza Hut, Domino's, Little Caesars, Father John's, etc. The first thing you should know is the average slice of pepperoni pizza is around 311 calories, has 13.5 grams of fat, 14 milligrams of cholesterol, 701 milligrams of sodium, 1.75 grams of fiber, and 12 grams of protein. First bite of that delicious greasy triangle activates your brain's pleasure center. You know, the part of your body that you try to hang on to for dear f***ing life as you struggle through your days. The tasty, salty, warm, cheesy, savory flavors triggers the release of digestive enzymes, which then breaks the carbs down into sugars your body will use for fuel. Now within 10 to 15 minutes, that sugar hits your bloodstream, but the fat and protein from the cheese and pepperoni will slow the boost of energy you should be getting. Then in about 20 minutes, if you keep eating slices, your cells will reject the fuel altogether and send it to your poor liver to be turned into fat. But by then, it's too late. You should be dead. Well, that's not true, unless you overate to the point of choking yourself to death on pizza. That's how my puppy went. After 45 to 60 minutes, after one slice, your blood pressure rises temporarily, which could promote dangerous blood clots in people who are at risk for heart disease. But if your body works correctly by that point you shouldn't even be thinking about food because the good old leptin kicked in. That's the hormone that inhibits hunger, you dangus. After three to four hours, your blood sugar should be back to normal and your body will start working to get hungry again soon. And it's about that time you want to reach for something a little healthier like pie or butter. Hey, definitely not those things. More like an apple or some carrot sticks. Otherwise, hey, keep eating the pizza. There's definitely some left over, right? Right? Of course not. You're a human being. You ate that whole large pizza by yourself, right? Congratulations. But also don't do that all the time. Moderation. God damn it, Steve, why is pizza so good and inexpensive? Because the government created it to kill poor people, Will. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Uh oh! Scientists claim the chance of a moderate-sized earthquake striking Los Angeles is almost guaranteed. Now they claim the greater Los Angeles area has a 99.9% .9 chance of having an earthquake of magnitude 5.0 or greater in the next two and a half years due to hidden faults that have built up over time. Will forgave me for my hidden faults. Why can't we forgive California? An earthquake can't hit Los Angeles. This is where all of our celebrities live. What if one of them gets a paper cut? But no one is exactly sure where the next tremor could hit, given that any one of the many faults could rupture. Andrea Donella and a geologist in the science division of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena stated, identifying specific fault structures most likely to be responsible for future earthquakes for the system of many active faults is often very difficult. Okay, your job is hard, we get it. These findings are based on the research done after the 5.1 magnitude earthquake that struck La Habra, California in 2014. It didn't cause any injuries, but its shallow depth and epicenter in a dense urban region ended up costing $12 million in damages. Wait, so you telling me I might get quake murdered because of an earthquake that some other town had? I'm getting out of here before it's two. Steve, is this it? Is this the big one? No, Will, I just skipped breakfast. I got the tummy rumblies. Now you. That's it. It has finally happened. The people of Milford, Connecticut have cried out and have been heard. A local subway now has to measure its sandwiches to ensure they are in fact an actual legal foot long. This is all of course due to a class action lawsuit at a Milford based chain where they were apparently serving sandwiches under 6 and 12 inches. The lawsuit prompted two years ago after a photo of a foot long sandwich next to a ruler that clearly showed it was not a foot long went viral. The settlement proposal said that particular subway will now amend franchise protocols which had apparently previously allowed for a small tolerance in the size of footlong sandwiches. The footlong is a lie! I actually can't believe this is a thing. People will sue anybody for anything. Well, you knew this. Remember the time I sued you because you didn't give me enough office hugs? How could I forget? Come on. Two more seconds. And you're good. Thank you, Will. You know I only do that because I love you. You may recall us talking about Bradley Cooper telling the public that he will start sharing his financial information in order to make more information available to other actors hoping to stop the wage gap between genders. Well, another well-known actor, Jeremy Renner, may have heard of him, in an interview with Business Insider was asked whether he would consider negotiating alongside female co-stars in the future to assure they were being paid fairly. He responded, that's not my job. Jeremy, aren't you famous enough that there's always a guy standing right off camera that stops you from being honest like most actors? I haven't even been in the Avengers and I got one. Don't say that shit, Will. Okay. I've got one too.
Rare also added, I don't know contracts and money and all that sort of stuff. He also included the fact that he fully supports actresses receiving equal pay as male actors do. He went on to say, I'm a performer and I know human behavior. Then act like Bradley Cooper. When it comes to that sort of stuff, I let other people deal with that. I do what I'm good at, that's what I focus on. Damn, I can accept that. We can't force someone to help further society. Sometimes you just want to make movies. But what do you guys at home think? Do you think everyone should share their information or only those who feel like they should? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm William Haynes. I'm Steve Zaragoza. You might be unaware that there's a new episode of People Be Like that just came out. Click this annotation to go see it and have a good time and watch us make content. I'll subscribe once you start talking more about Lord of the Ring. <laughs> I'm out of responses to that. <laughs> long ass t-shirts. And he's right, long ass t-shirts are a thing right now. And I like them. Countdown, mm -mm. huh? From five, mm -mm. four, <laughs>